The Blue Jays still have a lot of work to do this offseason, and reports have surfaced that they are actively pursuing left-handed outfielder Michael Conforto, so we'll discuss that along with the fact that the Blue Jays and White Sox are reportedly engaged in trade talks revolving around our catcher, Danny Jansen. So you're not going to want to miss this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? Nick Goss, your host of Jays Digest. And I'm doing this one solo today. Peter's feeling under the weather. So leave him your best wishes in the comment section below. But he'll be back for the next video. And yeah, we'll be doing this one solo. And we have a lot of news to break down today. Lots of stuff came out recently. It's been crazy in free agency. But before we do get into the video and all the news, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the Daily Jays content. We're on the road to 5K subs. We're hoping to hit it before uh, the end of December. So it would mean the world if you could hit the sub button if you enjoy daily, con uh, daily content. And there's tons of news dropping every single day. So we got you covered with that. But without further ado, let's get into the first topic of the video, which is that a report surfaced that the Blue Jays are among teams pursuing Michael Conforto. So Ken Rosenthal of The Athletic dropped an article on The, Ath uh, on the Athletic saying, Boras, however, said Conforto was throwing at 150 feet, putting him ahead of players who are just starting to get ready for the season. This is, uh, you know, speaking about his health, because that's a major concern. The Rangers seeking an impact back in left field are among teams with interest, along with the Mets and the Blue Jays. So... You know, that's the first time in a while that we've been directly linked to Michael Conforto. Obviously, you know, we've been discussing on this channel and tons of people around Twitter and Reddit are discussing the fact that, you know, since the beginning of the offseason, we needed someone to replace Teoscar Hernandez after we traded him for, you know, Eric Swanson. Someone to replace his power, someone to replace, you know, even give some diversity in the outfield, uh, you know, revolving a left-handed bat. Michael Conforto can bring that. Obviously, he was injured last year, didn't play uh, any games last year. People are wondering, like, is his health going to be sustainable enough? And why hasn't he signed yet? You know, most he's the last big fish, you know, if you consider him a big fish left in the um, in the free agency pool. And he had this to say. So Ken Rosenthal basically discussed regarding his health. Like, like I said, he's throwing 150 feet, putting him ahead of players who are just starting to get ready for the season. So they're basically saying that he's ahead and he's, you know, just in line with the other players who are healthy. And then health is not going to be an issue for Michael Conforto going forward. But clearly. A lot of teams are, um, you know, concerned about the health because he hasn't been signed yet. And every year that he's been in the MLB, he's been an above average hitter. Besides, I believe maybe one year he had, uh, you know, slightly below OPS plus. But, you know, he's an absolute stud when he's healthy. He's a power bat. He's a solid fielder. Is he a Gold Glove winner? No, but he is a solid fielder, and that's what the Blue Jays kind of need. Now, if he's going to be a potentially, you know, more of a DH situation, then uh, then that obviously, you know, takes the amount of teams who are interested in him down a lot. Regarding the Blue Jays, if he was a DH, you could still make it work. I saw a couple of tweets on Twitter saying if he's a DH, you could like you know part-time DH, part-time outfielder. You know you could rotate him and Springer in the DH spot and all that good stuff, and it would still work. Especially with the fact that you know Kevin Kiermaier came out and publicly said that he's our center fielder for this season. He has you know it's his job to lose. Now if you have Conforto there, add him to the mix. That's just another power bat. And you know, I'm a big Conforto fan. Now the fact you know we got Kevin Kiermaier that kind of narrows the chances down a little bit. But according to this report by The Athletic, we are still very interested in him. So let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are on that. I have another screenshot here basically saying this is from Lewis, just a uh, you know, guy on Jay's Twitter saying, if Conforto would be a primary DH at the start of the year and later transition into an outfield role, then he might be the perfect fit for the Jays. And you also get a bit more insight on his injury saying some of the teams considering free agent Conforto are concerned about his ability to throw at full strength, citing the surgery he underwent in his right shoulder last April. If he requires time to be a DH, he might be less attractive to clubs that want a more full-time outfielder like I discussed. Now, he makes a good point saying, you know, part-time DH to start the year, or full-time DH to start the year, and then transition into left field, he might be perfect for the Jays. Obviously, we have Lourdes Gurriel Jr. in left field, but he's not the best outfielder himself. So if he starts off at the DH, you know, maybe we trade a catcher. Maybe we trade one of Moreno or Kirk. It probably won't happen. We're probably going to trade Danny Jensen, but let's just say we do trade one of those guys. Then Conforto also makes a lot of sense. He can fill in, you know, for DH to start the year, and his bat is there. His bat has never been a problem at all in his career. And I can't expect or I don't expect the injury to really affect that. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are on the fact that, you know, maybe picking him up as a DH or maybe just getting him in general. Let me know your thoughts. And one last quick thing. Um, it doesn't have to do with Michael Conforto, but it was from the same article. Just a quick little, little tidbit of information here. The Blue Jays also targeted Michael Brantley before he signed with the um with the Astros this offseason. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Another left-handed outfielder. Obviously, he's a bit more of a DH in his career, but it kind of goes to show what kind of player they're targeting. You know, the, the Brantley is a DH now in his career. is mainly a DH in his career. Obviously, he can play some of the field, but he's not very good at it. So if they were targeting Brantley and ultimately, ultimately lost out uh, to the Astros again, 
then maybe that's why they're con uh, pursuing Conforto, even if he is going to be a full-time DH. It's just been interesting. But let's get into the second topic of the video, which is the Blue Jays and White Sox are engaged in trade talks revolving around Danny Jansen. Now, this is, this is pretty big news here. So I'm going to pop up the report now. This is from MLB News Network saying the White Sox and Blue Jays have had trade discussions regarding Danny Jansen. Now, obviously, we've had a few... Um, a few discussions on the on the on the videos here with Peter and um, basically discussing potential trade scenarios revolving around you know Liam Hendricks. That was the main thing. Liam Hendricks and Danny Jansen could a trade work between those two and what it would take to get a trade done if you are the Blue Jays and the White Sox because obviously both teams have to agree in a trade and his, you know our official report the first official report came out that there have been trade discussions revolving around Danny Jansen to the White Sox. Now this got you know everyone thinking including myself. What would it take to get a, the job done here? And obviously, they're, they're trade discussions. So, and the main player that comes up and keeps coming up is Liam Hendricks. Obviously, we have Eric Swanson, very elite reliever. Jordan Romano, elite reliever. You know, we have Adam Simber and players like that. But adding Liam Hendricks to the back of this bullpen, you know, a 7 8 9 inning of Eric Swanson, Liam Hendricks, Jordan Romano, whatever order you throw him in, is one of the best uh, 7 8 9, you know, final three bullpen arms in baseball. And that would just put us over the top regarding the bullpen and we also have obviously an abundance of catchers as we've discussed lots on the uh, on the show here so they could work and now i'm gonna pop up a couple trade scenarios that i've seen on twitter um, obviously peter's not here to discuss uh, some of his so he's just gonna pop this one up here so this is blue jays get now this one was posted uh, on twitter this one wasn't from me but it says blue jays get uh lucas giolito and liam Hendricks. And the white Sox get adam simber danny jansen and mitch white um, we actually have, according to this, um, you know, trade machine evaluator, has us slightly overpaying, but we obviously get a very good right-handed starting pitcher in Lucas Giolito, and of course the elite reliever in Liam Hendricks, and we give up Simber, who's a very, very solid reliever. We give up Danny Jansen and Mitch White. So obviously with this trade, if you're a White Sox fan, let me know what you think. I know a lot of you guys, um, you know, probably won't think this is a good deal for you, and I don't, if I'm the Jays, I, I do this deal. You get Lucas Giolito, who's a very solid starter. Um, you know, he had a bit of a down year here and there, but he's a solid starter in general. And you get Liam Hendricks, who is an absolute stud reliever. You're giving up, you know, the main piece here is obviously Danny Jansen, who has two years left on his deal. And the thing with Liam Hendricks, and this is why this trade machine sometimes values him lower, is because it takes money into account. You can see the little brackets million sign there. And he is on an expensive contract, Liam Hendricks is. I believe it's between 15 and 20 million a year, AAV. So obviously... You know, he's expensive, but the Blue Jays have the payroll to do that. You look at what the Mets are doing. They got Carlos Correa today. If they can spend, we can, you know, hopefully spend, you know, even we're way below them. But, you know, Rodgers is willing to spend according to Ross Atkins. And if Rodgers is willing to spend, may as well do it. We also give up Adam Simber and Mitch White. Now, Adam Simber, I feel like he might be underrated by some Jays fans. He had, I believe, a 2.88 ERA last year in 71 games. That is, like, some of the most out of a reliever in the MLB. He's been reliable since he got here in the trade um, a couple of years back for Joe Panic, and what a steal that was. Joe Panic for Adam Simber and Corey Dickerson, unbelievable trade. But Simber still has a fair bit of value, and the big thing here is that the White Sox get their catcher in Danny Jansen. We obviously traded them Reese McGuire, you know, last year, or a couple of years ago in the off season, and that didn't work out. They don't have a long term solution to catcher right now, so it makes sense to maybe trade them Danny Jansen and get um you know get a couple studs back. But do the White Sox do this deal? Who knows? If they want to shed a little bit of salary, they're obviously, you know, that's an expensive contract for Liam Hendricks, but they're trying to win, it seems. So who knows if they do this deal? Let me know in the comment section below. I have one last quick trade for you, and this is just Liam Hendricks for Santiago Espinal straight up. I saw this on, uh, I believe it was Reddit, and I was thinking about this as well, and there was a poll that went along with this uh, this trade. Now, it has the value is very even, and this one makes a bit of sense. I don't know if the, Reds, uh, if the White Sox would do it, but a lot of people were saying the Jays might not do it. And there was a poll saying, would you do this if you were the Blue Jays? 85% said yes, 15% said no. So let me know in the comment section what you would do. And, you know, Espinal was an all-star last year. He's gold glove caliber. He's such an elite defender. But we have Whit Merrifield, who, you know, most of us believe is going to be the starting second baseman for us um, going forward at least next year. But do you want to give up Espinal for, you know, a reliever is the question that, that keeps coming up. And people are saying, you know, Espinal is a three-war player and relievers can only give you so many war. I think uh, Liam Hendricks may be a two-war player. But if I'm the Blue Jays, personally, I think I might at, very, at the least very much consider this trade because you are going to get an elite bullpen arm. I don't know. I just love the thought of Liam Hendricks. He's obviously pitched here before. We've targeted him before before he had his massive contract with the, uh, with the, with the White Sox. So it just makes a lot of sense in general. It's an organizational fit. 
you know, it's an organizational fit and obviously with fitter bullpen. So let me know what your thoughts are on that trade. That one's very interesting as well. And would you vote yes if you're the Blue Jays or would you vote no? And if you're a White Sox fan, would you want that? Espinal is a phenomenal second baseman, but we also have Whit Merrifield. And we also have Kevin Biggio. So, you know, we have a bit of a log jams everywhere. But let me know your thoughts on all that stuff and all that Danny Jansen stuff. We'll move into the last topic of the video. Very quick one for you guys. Just Roger Center upgrades. I saw this on Reddit today. And I saw it around, uh, got posted around social media, and it's super, super cool. So I'm just going to show you guys two screenshots. Um, I didn't get the video clip because I'm not sure uh, if we were allowed to do a lap. But this is the CN Tower in the Rogers Center. They now have RGB lights. Now, I took still screenshots from the video that they posted. You can go on Twitter yourself and type in Rogers Center lights, and it will show you the exact video. It's around a 14-second video, and it basically just goes through Rogers Center lights, and they just change rapidly between different colors. You know, you got blue here purple blue it's just unbelievable and it looks so nice and they're making obviously the other major renovations adjusting the wall and doing all that stuff uh, 500 levels getting changed so to add this you know i'll show you one more time add the lights it's just such a neat um addition and i can't be more excited to um go to the roger center and see it myself and let me know what your thoughts are on that the roger center in general looks just amazing and uh, i don't know very cool i just want to figure you guys would want to see that but That'll wrap up the video. Again, apologies for uh, for being a solo. Peter's not able to make it today. But he will be back in the next video, and we will be having lots of streams coming up soon. We've been a bit busy, but we're going to um, we're gonna start pumping out the streams a lot more now. We love talking with you guys. And leave uh, leave some feedback in the comment section below on what your thoughts are on the video as a whole, as long as the trade, as well as the trade. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.